today we have something crazy we're about to do here. This is a uh, Scar 17, uh, Scar 17S, even though it's firing in caliber, heavy caliber 308. Um, 762 by 51 uh, with this amazing sight mark Opticon. And I'm gonna see if I can break this thing today. Not on purpose, but we'll see if this Scar really can destroy optics the way uh, it's supposed to. Can't really afford an Elkin, but we'll see what's up. Let's go ahead and fire some shots down range. I think looks hideous. 50 shades of FDE with the Ugg boot on there. So, let's see what we can figure out with this thing. Shooting some 308 today. We're gonna be shooting some Magtech tactical uh, ball ammo. Uh, nothing crazy about it, nothing special. Just brass that I found. So, let's see what's going on with that. Let's get some shots down range. What's up YouTube? This is Xavier back at it again with another video from DFW Gunworks. I've been away for a while. Not away away, just not on YouTube. Uh, things have been a little busy, a little hectic, got married. Um, money's been a little short, a little tight. Uh, ammo, hard to find. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. I got this uh, firearm uh, from a buddy of mine, just doing a review on it. And I shot a couple rounds through what I had. I was able to pick up some steel at a really cheap price. Um, felt like it wasn't enough footage, so I wanted to get some more for you. And I've just kind of busy ever since. So I apologize. It's been, I don't know, four months, almost five months now since I posted a video out. But I am back. Um, we're going to try getting some more ammo, getting some videos out to you guys. Um, moving in a couple months. So we'll try to get some stuff out before then and during the move. That will you guys doesn't watch. Um, but... Let's let that be that. Um, today, get something fresh for you guys. Um, definitely gonna be the 50 Shades of Grey uh, Scar 17 uh, S. So, um, I don't know, I, I mean, it's not an H, even though it fires a uh, heavy caliber. But uh, yeah, Scar 17 S, uh, chambered in 760 by 51 or 308. Um, we'll fire both. I shot 308 the first time, shot 762 or 51 today. Um, so I have video, video footage of that, as well as the first time I shot the, the, uh, the rifle. Um, pretty neat thing overall. Um, not very short gun by any means. Um, it is a battle rifle. Um, that being said, it does fire a huge cartridge. Uh, I don't have any rounds with me, so I shot them all. Um, to show you, as far as comparison between that and an AR-15, um, but just know the bullets are huge. Um, yes, this is a sight mark. Yes, I got it from Academy at a super cheap price for testing purposes because I was told that the scar uh, kills optics that are not worthy of it. And I don't think the sight mark is worthy of it. However, uh, didn't die, but didn't hold zero either. <laughs> I sighted it in. Got it on point and uh, it, it's almost like it was bouncing back and forth because I put it on the target, I was on a bench, shot, hit the target, shoot again, miss the target. I was like, what the heck, you know? Um, so, don't know if it was just me pulling the shots or if it was the optic. Hard to say at this point, I'm pretty bad. So, we'll see. But enough of that, let's go ahead and get you guys into some footage on the range. Um, new range today it was actually a range out in uh, Terrell. Um, called Northeast Texas Tactical. 
pretty cool place. Not actually that busy at all. I um, went out there, there was a couple guys shooting some, some long range, I think a thousand yard worthy guns. So maybe six, five, could be more. Reach out that far, maybe 800, 800 yards. Um, some guys that are shooting some crazy stuff. Um, 100 yard bays were pretty empty, but they were shooting some suppressed 308 um, and then uh, shot some pistols. So enough of that, let's go ahead and get some footage in and uh, hope you guys enjoy. All right, so it's had a couple rounds with the SCAR. Um, got it zeroed in a little bit. So we're shooting a little, a little uh, high. Um, with this sight mark, obviously a sight mark isn't special. It's freaking cheap optic from the Academy. Um, but uh, it's holding so far, getting a couple hits every once in a while. Other than that, the SCAR's pretty, pretty badass. No, no recoil really. It's usually pretty, it's pretty steady for 308. Um, gonna put about 20 more rounds through it and see how it goes. My hand was just resting on that, so that's really hot. Dumb butt. Um, nothing wrong really with it. It's, it's pretty good. Even shooting it, I went to go inside it down to 25 yards just to see how it worked, um, see if I can get it close. And uh, yeah, not really any recoil, pretty pretty minimal, so. Yeah, but now I'm like, uh, the back leg. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm gonna show you how to dismantle it. Dismantle it? Show you how to take it down. Take it down. Field strip, whatever. You know what I, you know what I mean. Um should I take it down? Uh, it's a little different than most AR fifteens. Um there's not two takedown pins, there's only one. Uh, but we're gonna do it right now. So first off, there's a takedown pin right here front of the fire control group. Um, first off, I'm gonna clear the rifle because I know all the gun nerds on YouTube think that uh, guns are always loaded. Uh, they usually are, but not in videos. Not in this video, actually, so. Pretty empty to me. I don't see around in there. There's no magazine here either, so no magazine. Uh, by the way, the magazines are kind of uh, weird shaped here. They have a different shade of tan, FDE, than um, the rest of the gun. Um, mag's empty and nothing in the chamber or attach the bolt, it would come out if it was. It's not, I promise. All right, so, gun's on safe as well, but let's go ahead and take down this, this uh, take down pin. So I'm gonna push that, push through this from this side over here. Right there, right there. Opposite end, right here, just push through. And once that's out, you actually can pop it forward a little bit and then slide upwards or away from the back of the gun, just like that. And there you go, that's the lower end, we are done. I'm just kidding, I'm done. Uh, fire control group, um, pretty neat setup. Kind of weird, whatever. Fire control group um, and lower, kind of, as well as the grip. Um, next up, I'm gonna run out of space real quick. Um, next up, we're gonna go ahead and slide off the Ugg boot because Ugg boot, right? Um, so that actually just pushes straight down, actually. So as long as you just push straight on it, it should slide straight down. There it is, just coming straight down. Boom, that's it, Ugg boot's off stock whatever all right so now we have our upper you know upper fire control group fire control group no upper receiver jesus christ it's been a while upper receiver um pretty heavy even if for be even for it being aluminum um it's still pretty nice i think the majority of it's gonna be this barrel that's massive because normally you think this is good but you have an extra eight inches nobody needs eight inches um so next up to get this out, this, this does kind of, if you guys look, it does kind of slide, but it does run into the top here. So pull down and your recoil spring is gonna come out, just like that. With the recoil spring out, then that allows you to remove this pin here for the bolt. 
and I'm gonna hold on to it, it's gonna flap the back. So, just like this, that comes up, just like that. And now the bolt comes out, boom, just like that. So now you can just throw this away because you don't really need this. Okay. But this is the money. This is the, uh, as some would say, the optic killer, uh, kind of. Basically what you have is, shoot the rifle like this, um, fire in your shot, uh, that, this huge piece of handcrafted or forged steel here, it's coming back. And when it hits that spring, it's shooting back forward, boom, and hitting that the front of the rifle, um, making your optics kind of take more um, recoil and damage to the front as opposed to the back. Now our ARs have the spring at the back, taking a lot of that, hitting back and going back forward. Uh, think of the opposite for a scar. Um, it's not really a, I mean, it looks like it, but not really a long piston setup. Kind of short. Because when you have this, this is all the way at the front of the gun. Um, but enough of that, because uh, it's all boring stuff. No one really wants to know about that nerd stuff, but uh, mainly the gun itself. So anyways, real quick, one last thing to show you guys, because it's actually pretty neat. Um, the star does come with an adjustable gas block right here. Um, so to get that last piece out, which you can take out as long as you have the right tools or if you can use them on the fly. First off, pop the side up. Front side does flip up, boom. Here's your gas block, right? So it does, it will flick left and right, boom. Changing between the pressures for suppression, things like that. Too much, too much gas, too little gas. Um, so there's actually a detent pin on it. I just want to flick it to the front and then using the the bolt pin here I'm going to push that detent down just enough to get it over that's it it's going to rotate all the way over and actually it's going to come up this is your gas box selector once it gets a little over there that's it that's out so inside here in the front that's where that piece is going to be uh, to get that out um, it'll come out actually through the front, so I, we just took it off. It'll take like a cleaning rod uh, and push through from the back, and it will push the piston right out of the front. Uh, so once you get that out, the gun is basically ready to go and get cleaned. Um, full access to the barrel and full access to everything else. Um, so pretty easy, uh, easy to clean. Um, so let's go and put this back together just so you guys can see it go back together. Um, assuming you did not take the piston out, you did. Just pop back in the same way you did. Go ahead and put this selector back in. And it won't spin all the way because we have to push that pin down. So easy thing to do is you just use that freaking lever you got. Try to do it backwards. Okay, oh. okay. flick it over. Drop this front side down because we don't need that in the way. We got our amazing side mark. Um, next up, Go ahead and slide the bolt back in, just like this. You guys can't see it. Go back in there, boom. That's hitting something. I know what that is. There we go. And once it's in the right space, you guys can see. Let's check it out right there. So, on the, like right here, it's got a certain shape that only lets that pin come out if it's right there for move. Once it moves, it can't, right? So. Trying to hold some one hand. I'll show you guys. Ooh. Once that's there, it's gonna go right in here, just like that. And we'll better pull it up because now the bolt attached, and the spring goes in. Just like that. Go back. That's gonna sit in there, um, not really move. And then you'll slide your amazing lug boot back on, back on from the bottom, just like this. Almost there, and then perfect angle here. Here's your lower or front trigger group, all that jazz, and we'll slide it in. So once he gets into place, pop it down. It's all snug, and the pin goes back through, and we're Gucci. Where's it at? Where's it at? Right here. Boom. We're all set. So we've just now field checked the scores. 17 um, S. Um, 
put it back together pretty easy. Um, all in all, you probably don't need to clean it as often as you would your AR-15. However, personally, I'd recommend doing it just because there's nothing wrong with cleaning your gun after every range day. It's good kind of practice. Kind of keeps it running, keeps it old up. Um, but here's how it looks with the magazine inside. So, pretty neat. Pretty neat rifle. Um, the muzzle device, uh, muzzle brake uh, with a small flash hider. Flash, flash hider. However, you still get some huge flames from the front of the gun. Um, I did not see any personally. However, they are very visible whenever someone else shoots it. Um, I couldn't see it. Um, but yeah, that is how you field strip and reassemble the SCAR 17S. Um, got some more range footage for you guys. So you guys want to hop into that and take a look at it. All right, so now here comes the hard truth about your, um, if you have any scar dreams. Um, rifle right now on Gun Broker, uh, going for $3,500. That's a lot of money, man. Uh, I just did a video on the Manurin MR73, which is also about the same price. Now, I know what you're saying. Why would you get the Manurin uh, uh, revolver, that amazingly blue finish and amazing capability of hitting 100 yards easy with the reset magnum and blacked out irons, um, as opposed to getting this bad boy? Um, I don't know. It's just a, one of those things that's just people prefer pistols or rifles. Um, that being said, I think the original or price before the hike of 2020, things started to get rough. Still are rough. Um, but uh, I think they were closer to like three grand, maybe less than that, maybe 2,500. Maybe, you know, it's just one of those things that they've risen in price um, and they're not, probably not going back down, especially ones like this, right? 
the the ones that are made in Belgium. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, it's kind of hard and difficult to see that we won't have this uh, you know option of score again at the price point it was once before. Um, so this is exactly why this is not mine. <laughs> Somebody mine. Shout out to. Uh, Shout out to you, Jose, for uh, letting me borrow your scarf for so long, man. Thank you very much again. Appreciate it. I went ahead and threw an awesome site on there for you. Awesome site on there. Um, so we could try it out, you know. But yeah, um, aside from that price point, is it worth it? If I can afford one and have it in an SBR form, yes. Uh, this, to me, it's just a little too long. Um, but still, it's a nice, nice, nice battle rifle, man. Nice battle rifle, you know, just pretty neat. Um, again, like I said, I had no issues with it. It was awesome. Would have been nice to throw a suppressor on it. However, the muzzle device is not, uh, something easy to take off and on. No quick disconnects yet, at least. I don't know what he's going to do with the rifle, but if he does, I'll point to another review on it with it suppressed. Um, however... That being said, you know, again, it was a long time, way to do this review, uh, or this just kind of quick info on this gun. Um, but other than that, it was a pretty neat, pretty neat setup. Um, I don't know if I told you guys, but everything on this gun is ambidextrous. Safety switch, safety selector, um, your magazine release is right here for the right hand side. Left hand side also has it over here. So that's gonna pop the magazine out as well. Um, except for the bolt catch, which slide release, whatever you want to call it. I was not going to have my ambidextrous, um, but uh, flip up sights from the irons um, in case you decide to need irons, in case your optic dies and you kill it on accident at the range or in a safety defense situation. But um, yeah, comes on with that um, neat battle rifle-esque of a gun. Long, big, probably hard to maneuver indoors, probably going to be extremely loud um, but will you need to shoot your perpetrator twice probably not and on that note guys thanks again for watching this video uh, by DFW Gunworks again my name is Xavier I uh, was glad to bring you this review um, looking forward to giving you guys some more here pretty soon I'll we'll get some more footage and some more ammo so we'll see what going out and do some more re um, reviews on those guns um, just recently got a new update for the AR-15, so that'd be fun to kind of use some of the AR-15 build video. Mine's nothing special, it's actually back in the corner. Right over there. Right over there. Um, but, um, that being said, um, probably gonna do that next. Um, was able to pick up a, uh, Yeah, SIG, MSR, uh, Green Dot Sight. Jeez, Jesus, man, that was like a glitch. Um, and uh, throw that on there. Got that zeroed in today, too, as well. Um, all I had was a steel case, and I had to use my frangible rounds to uh, to shoot it. I didn't want to, but you have to range until you got what you gotta do. So, I shot frangible today. Pretty neat. Never had shot frangible today yet, yet before, but uh, it's pretty nice. Pretty cool playing on the steel with bullets that are hitting 2,700 feet per second. And just disappearing from the hit up there. So that was fun. Um, but again, thanks guys, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a comment. I'll get back to it as quick as I can. Um, again, I'm just gonna apologize. Sorry it's been so long since I posted a video, but I'm definitely getting back into this um, again. Things are a little better now, so I can start um, putting all the time into it. But when it boils down to it, don't forget, uh, things are crazy out there. I turned eight, so just carry. That's all I can say. And uh, anyone asks, let them know why. Let them know why you're pro two way, why you're pro pro gun, things like that. And if they don't ask. Let them know, anyways. <laughs>